Hey everyone, this is David. This is kind of part two. I started doing a Marillion video and decided that um, I didn't want to have Marillion and Fish solo stuff be in the same video. So if you're wondering about Marillion with Fish, go back to my other video. Um, but this is just the Fish solo stuff. Uh, I figured I'd show you my vinyl first. I have the Gentleman's Excuse Me with B-Side Whiplash. Uh, red vinyl. I swear to God I had um, a version of this, which is the same thing with a Gentleman's Excuse Me demo version. I thought for sure I had one where it was like a cutout of this and the hole is like right there and it was just like a weird, um, I just can't find it anymore. I might have sold it. I'm not even sure. Um, so these are the two those are the two singles that I had. Um, this is the Vigil in a Wilderness of Mirrors, which is Fish's first album. Still my favorite. Um, I like a lot of uh, the stuff that he's, or all of the stuff that he's put out, but nothing uh, grabs me quite as much as this album. Uh, and this version has all the lyrics. When I first got this, I had a turntable that worked. Uh, I got this in probably 1990. It, it came out, yeah, 1990 is a release date. I got it the year it came out because you couldn't get it on cassette in the U.S. Um, the picture disc looks like that. And that on side B, which is like a full-on version of the album. I will precariously place it on a cloth over here and then the limited disc limited edition free poster also came with this now if you are not familiar with uh, fish's work his solo work um, I highly recommend it I, I do it is so awesome um, he is, he's got that cult status, um, never has been big in the U.S., neither has Marillion, but, um, he's toured here a few times. I saw him on the 13th Star Tour, I think in 2009, no, 2005 or something like that. Uh, this is like 13 years old, 14 years old, um, but, and he was great that night. I, at one point he was doing faith you and he came out into the audience and was, was like, l like laying hands, pretending to lay hands on people. I don't think he even touched anybody, but, um, he was literally a hand's length away from me and everybody's hands were up in the air and it was so fantastic. I really wish I had gotten to do the meet and greet beforehand, um, but we couldn't find the place that he was doing that at for some reason. It took us a long time to get to Milwaukee. What normally takes like five hours for us took us like 10 hours because the highway was closed down and we were detoured. Um, I did contact him and asked him if I could do a discography video with a bunch of samples. Um, and he did say he was fine with that as long as they were short samples and... Um, but I've had problems with doing all the work to do, uh, videos and it blocking me on YouTube. So I decided not to do that. I figured this is probably the best way to do it. Just talk about the albums and tell you how amazing, uh, this stuff is. Um, so that was the vinyl that I have. Uh, if you have not seen this book and you are a Merlian or Fish fan or Mark Wilkinson fan, this book is fantastic. It is 172 pages, uh, nice size. Uh, this is how, what size a CD is. We will be looking at that album soon. Um, but it has all the single release stuff that he has done all the Marillion stuff that he did from the big from the days of Marillion, lots of 
uh, liner notes or text. Um, I guess you can't have liner notes in a uh, in a book. It's just text. Um, with uh, Steve Wilkin or Mark Wilkinson and uh, Fish. And this was fantastic find. Uh, Fish sells this on his website, uh, or at least he did a few years ago, and it was, I think, under twenty bucks. Um, well worth the price. Uh, packaged really well. Uh, I have ordered from Fish's uh, official website a few times, and. Um, everything has arrived in great condition. Uh, one time they accidentally put, uh, the wrong item in and they said, um, you don't need to send it back. And they sent me the, the correct item and it was really nice of them and good customer service and stuff like that. So, um, but don't scam them. Don't tell them you got the wrong thing if you didn't, um, so, um, Vigil in a Wilderness of Mirrors, oh, such a great album. He, his bass player is so fantastic on this album. Uh, let me see what his name was. Uh, John Giblin was on this. I can't remember what bands he played with, but this album starts with Vigil and it is, oh, so powerful. Such an awesome album or, uh, opening track, um, to an impressionable, like, 17-year-old, I, I hung on every word of Fish, um, in his Marillion days, in these, you know, it was just fantastic, um, State of Mind, Big Wedge, which was about the, uh, you know, like big business and like America. And they said that that probably wasn't the best thing to release. I honestly, if they would have released company or vigil, I think that would have been awesome. But vigil is like eight minutes long. And, uh, but company starts out, he sings where beggars take checks and children steal credit cards from the pockets of wrecks that lie in the road. I came into my future, and that was just yesterday. I'm sure of my past. That's a knot in my gut. And it's so awesome. I love that song. So it's it's like um, just like a drinking song. I don't even drink. It makes me want to have a beer and just like sing oh boy will you sing for me now here on the hill halfway up halfway down it's just awesome just oh man i i'm i'm probably gushing too much about this but uh gentlemen's excuse me i thought that was such a touching love song and then now i listen to it it it's a breakup song it's so great that it's just a breakup side song disguised as a love song um uh, family business, which is about, um, about, fa uh, like domestic abuse. I mean, nobody else was writing really stuff about this and, uh, view from the hill, which was kind of his thumbing of the nose to Marillion. Um, if I remember correctly, uh, and cliche, what a great way to end an album. Great. Just great. Um, the this version. This is the only version of the CD that I've ever owned, and it has uh, liner notes and all the lyrics, bunches of photos. You guys know how I like to show you all this stuff. Uh, photos of the singles. Um, there's the huge poster that was in the picture disc. And, uh, there are, let me see what we got here. Um, a song called Jack and Jill, which is a bonus track, Internal Exile, which ends up being the, uh, title of his next album. And they kept it off this album for some reason. Uh, there's the Gentleman's Excuse Me demo and a song called Whiplash on this. Uh, this is, I believe... The EMI, no, this is Dick Brothers, 
um, remaster. This is the own. This is one of the few albums they did with EMI um, or Polydor. I think it was EMI that he did this on. Let me see. I'm sorry. Yeah, it is. It's it's EMI. But I'm hoping that we get the deluxe edition version of this and Internal Exile soon. I know he's been working on Internal Exile. Um, I'm going to just... That's, that's the album that I'm going to gush the most about, I will tell you that right now. But every album has a favorite track, and every album I'm going to talk about uh, and let you know what is on everything. This album starts out, oh my gosh, so awesome. Shadow Play. Shadow Play is... These, if you took Vigil and Shadow Play and just had a single with that, that would have been perfect to me. Um, both songs have that just kind of menacing kind of feel to them. Um, this also has, uh, you know, Just Good Friends and uh, another kind of yo ho ho kind of drinking uh, internal exile. Wait, wait, no, is I'm really bad with song titles, but, um, and something in the air, which I found this recently. It's the something in the air single, um, with special live versions of Credo and shadow play. And it comes with, it's really weird packaging. Uh, can't get it out very well. Man, this does not want to open. Here we go. It comes with a fake uh, 92 All Access Area um, backstage pass. And then the disc, which is kind of overkill a little bit. But, you know, I, got, I found it used at a local shop. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to get that because I don't have those two songs live in that version. Um, but yeah, Internal Axel, I remember seeing this in 1991, right? Yes, 1991. Uh, I saw it September or October 1991 when I was going to art school. And I did not have a CD player at the time. There is a, another version of this that was released in the U.S. I finally got it on cassette and a uh, totally different cover. Um, but I really wanted this, but I had no way of playing it. And it was like, I think the use or the new import version of it with this cover was probably 30 bucks at the time, maybe 25 Um Really great album. These, I, I'm going to be completely honest. Some of these I didn't get until he put out these special editions. Uh, this is Suits, his uh, third studio album. There is one album that I don't have of his. It's called Songs from the Mirror. Um, I am not a fan of cover songs by any means. Um... I have thought about getting it, like adding it onto an order when his new album comes out, but at the time I couldn't justify uh, buying it for just to be a completist. Um, all of these, and I'm not going to show every booklet, but every booklet has all the lyrics and extensive liner notes by Fish himself talking about the time period and what they were doing and um everything i can actually kind of stand these up and so i can um look at the the backs of them but i need to elevate this a little bit higher so this has the main album and my favorite song on here is mr 1470 um it almost should have been the title track. There is no title track called Suits, but they sing Suits in there. And I, for years, thought it was not paying attention for some dumb reason. 
um, when I when I borrowed it from my friend back in like '94 or '95. Um, when did this album come out? Yeah, 93 is when he starts his liner notes. So um, this also comes with uh, demos, a disc of demos, and, sorry, my, and a live disc. My uh, light source around here is kind of crappy, so I might have to go like this to uh, read some of these. Um, yeah, this is a great album. Um, some people criticize it for being a change in direction direction. I think it is one of his best ones of, um, you know, past the first two. Um, I don't know what people are talking about. I love the artwork too. And totally worth the price of admission. Uh, this album, Sunsets on Empire, is the one he did, I think he did this one, with uh, Steve Wilkinson. Let me see. Or, not Steve Wilkinson, that's the artist. Uh, Steve Wilson from Porcupine Tree was the guitarist on here. And it has the main album, um, which is, on all of these, they have been remastered. Um, then he has the demos with Steve Wilson plus bonus tracks, um, and then a live disc. And my favorite songs on, on here, uh, is Perception of Johnny Punter. Um, there are two versions of that song on here. Let me make sure this is the song I am thinking of. There's a lot of stuff for me to remember in, in these in this discography. Um, yes, this is the song that he um, had to change the lyrics at the beginning of Perception of Johnny Punter. So there's two versions of that song on here um, because his U.S. Distribu distribution kind of got like weirded out because he didn't want they didn't want people to freak out um he does use derogatory terms and um but it it's in a way that is kind of describing the state of the world um and the way people uh think and yeah it's it's i mean he doesn't he's not doing it to be mean or, or racist or anything like that. He used it in a way to describe how the world was going. Um, so you get the, the edited version on disc two. Um, Rain Gods with Zippos. I bought this when it first came out. I wasn't a big fan at first, but the song Tumble Down is so good. And same with Faith Healer. Faith Healer is the song that uh, he went out into the crowd and, and yeah, it was so awesome. That was such a great show. That'd probably be in one of my top five shows ever. Um, and then there is a six part song called Plague of Ghosts on this. Um, Disc two has Plague of Ghost variations um, and bonus tracks. And then there's uh, live bonus tracks and demos on disc three. And uh, if I didn't say before, these are like in the booklet form. And these are nice because the CDs, you know, they it's its, its own little thing so you can kind of push on it and then pull it out and then you don't get any scratches on your discs i should actually have all these in plastic but they usually don't move from my uh cd racks unless i know i'm gonna listen to them so i don't have any fear of like the cds kind of falling out they're they're good 
uh, Fellini days. I had never owned this until I got this version. Um, but the song is so Fellini and 3D, well worth the price of admission. Um, this one also has demos and radio edits and live stuff. Um, again, if you are interested in any of these, um, I'll put links to his, I think he has a Spotify, um, his Facebook, his website, and the shop to buy them, uh, Buying direct from him is probably the easiest and most affordable way to buy these. Um, I don't know how available they are in other places. Um, this one, I remember in like 2007, my friend Woody, who I went to see this show uh, with he lent me this and I looked for it forever and I could never find it. So I decided I'll just wait until he was done with these. Cause I knew that these were all going to be coming out. Um, moving targets is fantastic. And old crow. Um, as I said, I'm pretty bad with titles. Um, I believe exit wound is another one of my favorites on here. Um, I've actually listened to this probably one of the least, um, even though I liked it a lot. Um, sometimes if I like an album a lot, I will listen to it a little less, um, than the ones that I have a harder time getting into, like, uh, Fellini Days, um, because I guess I would rather listen to ones that I need to absorb and really get into. Um, but yeah, this is fantastic. This is 13 star. This is the album that I saw him on tour for. I'm going to put this back up. Um, he was fantastic that night that we saw him. Um, I have the extra version with the making of 13th Star, ordered direct from him, two disc set, um, comes with the booklet with lots of artwork, I believe, oh, here we go, sorry, that is what is on my t-shirt. That's an edited version of the full artwork. Um, and then this has all the lyrics in there. And you don't really need liner notes because you have a making of DVD. Uh, I would say my favorite favorite song on here is uh, Circle Line and the song Dark Star. Um, Circle Line... Or no, Arc of the Curve. I like Circle Line too, but Arc of the Curve is the thing that he talked about uh, his ex fiance or whatever uh, being into fairies. And he got mad and he threw a fairy statue and he everything went in slow motion as the Arc of the Curve of that fairy smacking into a field behind their house or something like that. Um, yeah, he is, he, he is a fun storyteller if you ever see him live. And if you do s decide to go see him live, you better go soon because he is retiring after this next tour. He has an album that is, uh, scheduled to come out soon. Um, there's a three song EP with three songs from that, that I, I have yet to get. Um, and actually I think there's only those three songs will be on there or two songs will be on the next album and his, um, they will all be on the next album. There were, there were, I think two or three live things, but I had to, uh, figure out 
what I wanted to get, whoa, what I wanted to get and like how much shipping it is because I mean, it's coming from more Scotland or Germany or something like that. Um, this was his last album that he's done called a feast of consequences. And this version, let me, uh, see if I can make that stay up. That one doesn't want to stay up. Now that there's not tons of weight behind it, it'll probably stay on this. Um, this one is a huge booklet with, um, let me see exactly what's here. Uh, it has a separate DVD, a film about making a Feast of Consequences. Uh, my favorite songs on here are Perfume River and Feast of Consequences. Um, oh no, Great Unraveling is awesome too. Um, this one I have listened to about half a dozen times since I got it. Um, I love all the artwork and there's basically multiple pages for each set of lyrics with, with a bunch of artwork in it. Um, also kind of a story about where he where he got the idea from that's like six pages of liner notes that come with this version I'm not sure how much this was but well worth the price of admission there are a couple things that are live that I lent to my friend that I realize I do not have with me at this moment I have a two or three disc set um, let me look at my discogs well I'll put this up because this is one of the last few things that I'm going to show. Um, so there are a few things that I don't have that are fantastic. Um, that's the nice thing with Discogs is I can just type in fish, not foch, fish. And it'll show me releases and let me know what I have. Um, so some things that are live that I don't have with me right now are Communion, which is a live acoustic version. Um, I really want to get either Return to Childhood or there's a new one. Um, Oh, I can just show you this. Do, do, do. So I have communion. I have Lemington Spa. Oops, sorry. Wow, that really does not want to show up. Um, which is a two disc live um, set a lot of um, what do you call it a lot of Marillion stuff that really doesn't want to show up why did the first one show up fine um, and then I have oh I want the farewell to childhood uh, two disc set with with DVD um, I have the Movable Feast live European tour, which is a four CD set. Um, but I lent those to my friend who wanted to hear them. So, sorry. Um, I got these two, I got this one locally. No, did I? Nope, I bought both of these directly from Fish. Um, this is from 1991. Uh, great sound. Uh, really awesome they they do vigil uh shadow play credo company wait wait is the company on here no family business um and a bunch of merlian stuff this one does company on disc two and these are both two disc sets there's a couple that i want to get but they're not in print anymore and i couldn't order them directly from him um this was, strangely enough, through Road Racer at the time. And I think 
like the Johnny Punter uh, song, uh, the album. Um, let me see. Sunsets on Empire. I think this was originally put out by Road Racer or Road Runner, actually. Um, so yeah, that's that's my fish collection and kind of going through everything. Um, as I said before, if you're curious on fish stuff after he left Merlion, uh, you cannot go wrong, uh, especially with these first two albums. And some of these later ones, like Field of Crows and 13 Star and Feast of Consequences. Um, I'm looking forward to the new album. It hopefully will be released soon, but I can wait. I know he's got a lot on his plate. Um, and I'm hoping that soon we will get the deluxe edition of Internal Exile and Vigil. This is the only album that he doesn't own the copyright, he said, um, as far as I can remember. Uh, so thank you, Fish, for doing tons of awesome music. And yeah, all right, take it easy.